guys in the dark. My name is B, and I'm an entrepreneur. I was going over financial projections with an investor when he exposed himself to me. He stood up, pulled out his erect penis. It was actually pretty awkward and very uncomfortable. It was unfair. I originally just shrugged off the awkwardness, and I never confronted him about it at all. He probably thinks that we're close friends. There's frequently touted ethos that investors fund people, not just ideas. Because of that, investors need to get to know founders. Much of the building that I work at, things happen like that quite often. It happens over drinks, sometimes even over dinner. I have a friend that went out to drinks with one of her co-founders. Honestly, I don't see anything wrong with drinks or dinner. But the undefined relationship between entrepreneurs and investors, coupled with the industry's power dynamics, can complicate casual meetings. It's especially complicated for us females, as men do control the vast majority of capital. 89% of those making investment decisions at the top of 72 firms are male. At least that's what one survey has said. This usually means that females are primarily pitching to men, and it's typical to meet investors in informal locations like restaurants, bars, coffee shops. It's also the norm of taking meetings after working hours, especially for younger founders like myself. But when the investor had flashed me, I felt a very deep and sudden and overwhelming sense of shame, like I'm pretty stupid, I should have known this was going to happen. And honestly, I'm wondering why he wasn't taking me seriously. I never did report him. I just left it alone, and eventually I just stopped talking to him altogether. I had worked as an office manager, and the only woman for an industrial insulation company. I had just come back from maternity leave. I was worried about my milk supply. I went to the bathroom to pump for about 15 minutes every two hours, and all of the men in the office would stand in the break area, right in front of the bathroom door, and make baby crying noises to make fun of me. Eventually it progressed to the point that they would make crying noises every time that they passed my desk, in hopes that I would leak through my shirt. They would also make comments about how much larger my breasts were since having the baby. I felt so harassed and unsafe that I would dread going to work every single day, and I even had more than a few nervous breakdowns. My husband was furious, and I had to convince him not to take any drastic action so that I could be sure to have a good reference if I needed to find another job. We had a long conversation about it, and looked at our finances. We had both decided that the extra money wasn't worth the emotional distress on me. I ended up quitting my job, and now I'm staying home with the kids. And honestly, it's a lot less stress on me, and I'm happier to spend time with my children. This was during 2001. It was during the dot-com crash. I had a tough choice. Raise money for my startup or let 26 employees go. I set up a meeting with a powerful venture capitalist in New York City who I had hoped to want to invest. The investor had scheduled a meeting at an expensive restaurant. When I arrived, he ordered a $5,000 bottle of wine for some reason. He had refused to accept no for an answer when I told him that I didn't drink. I honestly can't count how many times my glass was refilled. However, I do remember the VC touching my leg leaning over to kiss me, and also telling me that he wanted to take care of me. I excused myself to the restroom. I had vomited. Then I called a friend, and I fled the restaurant as soon as I could. I stayed silent about the encounter for more than a decade. But in recent weeks, a flood of all too familiar stories about sexual harassment had reopened the old wounds and inspired me to speak up about it. I honestly can't believe after all these years that it still hurts, you know? When I was 13 or 14, I was babysitting two kids, and some other kids had come over for a play date. I ended up watching them too. I got a ride home from the dad of one of the kids who had come over. Earlier I had noticed him staring at me, specifically at my chest, but I didn't think anything of it. When we got in the car, he asked me where I went to school. That was pretty normal, what I did outside of school. That was a little weird, but eh, I shrugged it off. And if I had a boyfriend which I found pretty creepy. I, being innocent and a little bit of a nerd, proceeded to talk about the classes that I was taking 
and how time-consuming but fun they were to me. I remember feeling flattered that he had asked me so many questions about my life and seemed to listen to any of my responses. I lived close by, so luckily I was home before anything could happen. As I was leaving the car, he asked for my phone number to contact me to babysit, which again is weird in retrospect because his daughters said that they have had a live-in nanny who usually watched them. I didn't have a cell phone at the time and told him to ask the people that I babysat for regularly to send him an email. He looked kind of mad at me, but by this point, I was out of the car, and I was walking up the stairs to my front door. Next thing I know, right before I get inside the door, he tells me that we should hang out alone sometime, and that he would love to get to know me more. I was creeped out by this, so I ran inside. Later on, I had told my mother about it. Me and her had both decided that I should stay away from him, and if I'm going to be around him, that I shouldn't be alone whatsoever. I don't work, but this happened to me at school. So this boy decides to sexually harass me, and I go to the principal. They said that they would talk to him about it. He's done this to 14 other girls, six of whom had reported it. I became the seventh. He gets in school suspension for a week. Just a week. He's still allowed to go to school there. Gets a small infraction on his record. It wasn't right with me and my friends. So after he had gotten out, We had multiple people walk me and the other girls around to their classes so that they could feel safe. He tried to talk to me, but they formed a barrier between me and him. They all told him that he better go away. I had never felt more powerful than when I saw him get smaller and smaller down the hallway. Eventually, he stopped trying to talk to me, and I'm glad. I'm also glad that I had such support at school with all of those people. I just wish they would have done more about him and got rid of him. During the first month of my job at a theater, I worked the night shift most days with my male supervisor. One night we started talking. I gave him my Snapchat, just like I had done with my other co-workers. That night he sent me a dick pic and asked me to rate him, knowing he had a tendency to drink. I had just shrugged it off and ignored my discomfort. Two days later, as we were cleaning at work, He sent me a Snapchat that said, I'm hard. I ignored it and tried to remain calm about it. The next day when I worked with him, we were cleaning again, and he told me that we needed to go check out one of the theaters, even though we had just cleaned to that theater. And as soon as the door had closed right behind us, he crept towards me and asked, Do you want to touch it? I immediately ran into the lobby where there were a few dozen people. This went on for about six months. At this point, I was really scared to tell my employer. I was promoted to supervisor after he quit this year, and I do my best to make sure that none of my employees have to go through what I went through. I make sure that they have extra supervision, and that I keep an eye on everything as much as possible. And if there's going to be a male and female working together, I make sure that there's an extra person, that way there's a witness. I used to work in property management. My boss would hit on me constantly, and since he lived on site, and I worked, he would come drunk in his pajamas on Saturdays and ask me personal questions. He would make me file in his office, and then he would just watch me. Once we had to check out an apartment, and he closed and locked the door right behind us. He seemed pretty drunk, even though it was a work day. He began asking me why I think I can be so confident, and think that I'm hot shit. I left. And when he came back to the office, he began reading my browser history to the whole staff and mocking me. The next day, my boyfriend had brought me lunch. Two hours later, there was a memo about how there were no personal visitors allowed on site. This is just one of the example of dozens, unfortunately. He was much bigger than I was, and luckily I didn't work there much longer. But when I reported his behavior to the temp agency that I went through, they said that they already knew about it. It had happened to several girls before me, and they just shrugged it off. I found out later that they just kept on hiring more girls to take my place. I really feel sorry for them having to deal with this guy. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.